Welcome to the Cincinnati Zoo's Home Safari. Uh, my name is Marky and I am joined um, with Melanie, another fellow keeper. Um, we are both interpretive keepers here at the zoo and we are here to show you a very special animal in our Animal Ambassador collection. This is Salvador. Salvador is a lesser tamandua. Um, they're also known as lesser anteaters. Um, they're found in central and southern uh, South America. Salvador is using one of the coolest adaptations that they have, that very long snout and that 16 inch tongue, eating some of his favorite treats. Um, I have worms here in my hand. Sal is four years old. He is here on a breeding recommendation um, with our female Isla. But he is a part of our ambassador program. Uh, we do do training with him. Right now we are in behind the scenes of one of our interpretive buildings in our exercise yard. Um, just getting some fresh air, doing some training and letting Sal explore this environment. These guys eat about 10,000 bugs a day, um, mainly termites. They eat a lot of termites. If you can see on his front foot here, they have four toes, but that middle toe, it has a very, very long claw, and they use that claw to tear open those termite mounds. They will also use those claws as a defense mechanism. There we go. Thank you, Mel or Melanie. They're very, very sharp. These guys will also walk on the sides of their feet as they're walking around so those claws don't dig into the pads of their feet. So if he starts walking around, hopefully he will, so you can see him climb. You're going to see his front feet, they're always on the sides and that's just to protect the pads of his feet um, from those claws. These guys are very arboreal. They spend a lot of time high up in the trees. The coloration of their fur is used for camouflage. He's using his best sense, which is his sense of smell. Um, they don't have good eyesight at all. They depend on their sense of smell and also their hearing. <laughs> Another really cool adaptation that these guys, ha these guys have is their very long tail. That is a prehensile tail. Um, you guys have met a few animals throughout our home safaris that do have a prehensile tail. Um, and they use that kind of like a third or a fifth foot, um, like a tripod. He can hang from his tail, um, support his body weight. He'll also stand up on his hind legs and that tail can support his body weight. We have a few different um, enrichment devices out here in the yard for him to see if he can show you some of his really cool adaptations that he has. One being this very long tongue. Melanie has a clear tube there with some honey. Want it? He's starting to taste it a little bit, smell it, see what's in it. You don't want that? He's not interested. Aww. So thank you guys so much for joining all of our home safaris. We really appreciate all of your support um, during this time. And be sure at the end of this home safari, there is a quiz and it's all about tamanduas. Um, a few weeks ago, there was one with Isla, our female tamandua, and now we're showing you Sal. So there's lots um, of information that we've given you about tamanduas, and we just want to test your knowledge. So be sure to check out that quiz after this home safari. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask throughout this live video. Jackson wants to know, um, what does his nose feel like? <laughs> what does his nose feel like? So it's actually pretty soft. Um, the very tip of it, it's very, very soft. Um, there's not a lot of fur on his nose because he's using that quite a bit. When he's putting his nose in the tip of uh, his mouth into termite mouths. So these guys have really, really thick, coarse fur and that helps so ants don't get onto his skin and also termites. So this is actually a really, really soft um, part of his snout there and then the nose is really slimy and um, their saliva is very very sticky and that's for when they stick that 16 inch tongue into a termite mound it grabs onto the bugs and sucks them right into their mouth now a really cool fact about these guys is their mouth 
is about the size of a pencil. So their mouth is very, very small. They don't have any teeth. So everything they eat goes straight into their belly and is broken down that way. We made him, let's see, if he can, if he can make his way to one of the clear tubes we made out here. Yeah, you can just grab it if you'd like. Um, these guys love stinky things. So like apple cider vinegar is one of his favorite treats. We mix this with some tomato. Um, one of the other keepers in the department calls it the tomandua ketchup, but it, he really, really loves it. That's just a little hole there. And if you can see, he's interested in the camera, but how they use that tongue and how they can stick it into various holes. So now he's just interested in all the smells. There's lots of different smells out here. Woo! <laughs> there he used his tail as he fell off that perch. He used his tail to hang on. So he did show how that tail is used as a fifth limb. And I will say too, these animals are very clumsy um, in the forest. And so they actually have extra cushion around their vertebrae. Um, to help them catch their falls um, because they do fall from high up in the trees um, and they basically just fall and and get back up just like Sal is doing right now and he didn't even worry about the fall he's more interested in his um, enrichment box there. Sadie wants to know is his fur soft or is it coarse? It's um it's actually a little bit coarse it's very slick um, and that way, again, so the ants or whatever insect house that he's invading, uh, that they will <laughs> that they will just slough right off of his fur when he's going in. So he feels a little bit more pig-like, I would say. He's Grace interested in question. the shoes. Are they able to make any sounds or noises? Um, yeah. They make more noises with their sniffing. Um, their babies can actually cry. He's interested in all the other animal smells on my shoes here. Do you want your tomato ketchup? What no. other sounds do you think of? It's, um, it it's more just the blowing of the, through the nose. And then if he was um, trying to defend himself, they would make like a growling noise um, against a predator. But the biggest uh -huh. defensive mechanism that these guys have is actually their smell because they smell so awful um, that predators can know that they're around in the area. And typically no one wants to mess with this stinky, stinky animal um, like a tamandua, so they pretty much stay away. But like Melanie said, um, their sense of smell, when they're sniffing, that's pretty much all the noise you're going to hear these guys make. Ellie wants to know if they're in danger. Are they in danger? That's a really great question. They are not. Um, they are least concerned um, in Central and South America, um, so their numbers are actually doing pretty good. Andy wondered, what are their predators in the wild? So again, um, these guys don't have too many. Um, one would be a jaguar possibly, but these guys are so stinky that no one really wants to eat such a stinky animal like a tamandua. <laughs> um, so these guys don't have too many predators. Katie asked, what is his favorite food? His favorite food? Um, I would probably say his worms. Uh, again, these guys eat about 10,000 bugs a day. Um, so his worms <laughs> are by far one of his favorites. There's lots and lots for him to explore out here and check out in this large yard. Um, being an ambassador department, we care for about 200 individual animals. And there's lots of different species of animals that actually come out in this yard uh, for exercise and also training. So he could be smelling um, one of our other animals or even any native scents that from animals that he's getting throughout uh, this enclosure. Madeline wanted to know, what is his favorite weather? His favorite weather would actually actually be hot and humid. Um, that would be one of their favorite, his weather, uh, what he would like to catch. So what you're, what you're seeing right there, I just wanna catch the moment, he's actually scent marking. So they have some glands on their rear end, just kind of like how skunks do or dogs. Um, and so he's just rubbing his scent all over the wall for the other animals to know that this is his area or that maybe he's looking for a lady, perhaps Isla. <laughs> Lauren asks, you have talked a lot about how bad he smells. 
What does he smell like? I can't even put it into words. It's skunky. It's very putrid. Um, <laughs> a lot of people want to know it, where the skunk is in the zoo when they're near, like, it, actually not too close to the building. You can smell them pretty far. Yeah. Um, it's a smell you'll never forget. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a, its own twist from the skunk. Mm -hmm. Hudson wondered, does he have a favorite toy? Or an enrichment type. I would think he can tear up. He loves to tear up um, things with these very, very sharp claws. Um, and then any, typically he's really all about the tubes that we have out for them. Uh, so he can use his tongue to pull up different food items we might put in them. But boxes are typically one of his favorite things. So we thought we would bring out some boxes for him to shred up. Uh, but he's more interested in all of us and all the smells in the yard. Did you think it was something else? I was going to say um, just climbing structures and yeah, the boxes. He likes to tear that up and even old branches, things that are very bark, like um, rotting bark. He likes to pull that all apart. Calvi wondered how long is their tongue? So their tongue is about 16 inches. Um, I was hoping we'd be able to really demonstrate that tongue length with you today, but he's not really interested in any <laughs> of his enrichment food items that we have uh, provided for him. But the tongue is very, very long. Again, it's very sticky and there's barbs on the tongue which allow him to grab the insects and they can't get away when he sticks his tongue into an anthill or a termite mound. These guys also, um, when they eat, they won't sit there and eat the whole termite mound at once. They'll eat a little bit at a time so they don't deplenish the whole population of the termite or the ant. So these guys are very intelligent in that source where they won't deplenish their whole food um, <laughs> source where they typically go. They typically will stay in the same area too of an ant hill or a termite mound and just hit each one up at various times. Giovanni asked, do they live in family groups or alone? They're pretty solitary. Um, the moms will raise their babies for a little bit while, for a little while. And then um, there will be pairs like mates that will uh, meet up for, for the occasion of making a baby. But otherwise they are solitary. Emily asked, how many babies do they have at a time? Usually just one, just like humans. And Clara wanted to know what's the gestation? 90 days? Yeah, their gestation is about 90 days. Give or take a little bit, which is about three months. Kaysen wanted to know what is their lifespan? How old can they get? Um, I believe it's up to about 15, 20 years old. And he is four, he might be five now. Um, so he's a, he's a young male. Callie asked a question for you two. Um, how did you guys become zookeepers and do you have any tips for people that are interested in that field? So the question was, um, how did we become zookeepers and do we have any tips or um, suggestions for others that are interested in this field? Um, I started out by volunteering at the zoo uh, and then I got a seasonal position with our Wings of Wonder Encounter and over time that turned into a full-time position for me. Um, so I've been here for about 10 years. Uh, my suggestion would for young kids to just get as much experience as you can. Volunteering at shelters, uh, volunteering at the zoo for one. We do have an amazing volunteer program. Uh, the zoo also has a high school here on grounds for juniors and seniors through Hughes High School. Um, that's a really great opportunity as well. Uh, and I'll let Melanie tell her story. I've also been here about 10 years and um, I basically just grew up coming to the zoo and was very inspired by animals like um, Salvador here. So um, I went to college, got a zoology degree um, and then started interning and working my way up here as well. But it is a very hard field to get into. So my recommendation is just to stay very motivated and don't get discouraged. And our last question is from Laura. Um, she wants to know, does he have a favorite keeper? Um, I think he likes us all. We all feed him. We all give him enrichment and time. Um, I think he probably likes Isla the best, his <laughs> female mate. Um, so they have a really good time. They actually tumble around a lot and play. So he probably likes her the best. 
All right, well, you guys, thank you so much for joining us again for our home safari. Um, be sure to check it out again tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Um, and also, don't forget to take the quiz and test your Tamandua knowledge. See how much you've learned from this home safari with Salvador and also our home safari with Isla. Uh, thank you guys again for all of your support during this time. And we hope you have a terrific rest of your day.